Well, you may remember Congress passing a law last summer requiring a third-party testing and certification for all toys. The idea was to stop the sale of Chinese-made toys with high levels of lead. The rules aren't a problem for big companies, but they are for the little guy, like Dan Cummings takes us to meet in Camillus in this one of your stories. Whether it's a spinning top or small wooden cars and trucks. And I do believe people have a, a belief that handmade uh, products are, are safe, generally. And that's why Mel Tabor and other home-based toy makers think the new law is overreaching. Everything has to be tested, including the wood you use and the finishes you put on. And if you put more than one finish on, they have to be tested individually. Well, besides his own handmade toys, Mel's also concerned about what could become of his inventory of these small metal die-cast toys, already painted, that he obtains from another vendor. Mel offers these for sale along with some of his woodworking toys. I believe that I'm going to be stuck with that, that inventory. Because it's made by somebody else. Made by someone else. Not tested yet. Not tested yet. And Mel makes wooden boxes, well, too. One. Under the law, are they toys? If a 12-year-old buys one of my wooden boxes, am I in violation of the law? Well, you, I need some Under the law, you're subject to pieces off. <laughs> Mel's been selling at craft shows for 30 years, but he says the new law could bring all of that to a screeching halt. I think once the lawmakers see the, the total impact on this, uh, they will do something about it. And there was a tremendous, tremendous switch to handmade toys after the, the toy recall. Safety, he's all for it. It's the cost for the small businessman that he questions. In Camillus, Dan Cummings, News Channel 9. Now, Congress is going to likely take another look at the new law once the new Congress takes effect on February 10th, possibly making exceptions for the smaller home-based woodworkers.